Okay, hope everyone's doing well. Uh, I wanted to make a quick video on engine balancing. Um, just a quick uh, crash course on all this. So along the short is we've got the con rod stripped out. So notice that the rods are still in and the bolts are in. And then we've got the pistons here. These are the new ones going on. These ones are going to get uh, balanced as well. So we're going to measure them all out now. So first of all, you would first weigh all components individually. And then like that everyone knows how the scale works so i'm not going to spend time on that um so what we are doing here in this case we want basically the reciprocating mass which means the mass that turns around the whole time to be more or less the same weight now the total weight of everything doesn't matter as long as it's all more or less within spec so first of all we got our con rods here we got our rod bearings over here we got our uh, gauging pins over there I suppose you guys can see it and we've got the pistons over there so if, normally you would have like a sheet and you would write everything down but just basically start by weighing everything and then get get three measurements on every component so 234 which would reset 234 which would reset that's 234 right we're going to measure the next one 231 232 232, 232, right? Pretty self explanatory, just getting the weights on everything. 235, 234, 234. So we're going to go 234 on that one. And then this one here, 233. 233 233 so I believe the lightest one was this one 231 right so we're gonna go 231 we're gonna place that here so you know that is our reference and what you want is you want the lightest ones because you can always remove material but you can't add material so that's what we're gonna look at then second thing you're looking at is your gauging pins right 78 79 let's go 78 there 78 there, 77 there, 78. So this one, I just want to measure again. Okay, 78. So all our gauging pins are more or less the same same weight. They are all at 78. So we're not going to be balancing the gauging pins. They're already balanced. So we're going to be focusing on actually balancing the pistons. Um, second of all, we're going to be looking at the rods. Now notice I've got the rods and the bearings here and in the beginning of the video I have the bearings on individually. That is because what we're going to try and do is, you see there's a gram difference already, a little, a little high. So it's, it's on the upper edge of 12 and 13. So we can basically play around to get an extra gram there should we need. But we're just going to, for argument's sake, put on the rod and then measure the whole rod. So what we're going to do here grabbing on the cloth there you're going to get that more or less center of the scale you got 537 538 measure that three times 538 538 because okay, so I'm going to go with 538 on this one and then second one 538 538, 537, 538. Okay, now I've already balanced the rods by themselves, but I have not balanced them with the bearings. 538, 538, 538. Okay, and this guy, 538, uh, uh, do that again, that's one nine there, 539. 539 539 there's a little cloth on there now the cloth was touching it still got a 539 there okay so now what we're going to do in this case we are never going to cut bearings we are going to swap them around and see what we can so we can maybe change this set 25 I think this here was a uh, 26 
26 yeah so so this is on the upper edge of 25 and 26. so what we're going to do we're going to take these bearings away from there and swap them with these ones yeah, and now we measure it again 538 I still got a line there 539 okay so we have now balanced it now we've got to check the other one to make sure we didn't mess up the measurements see this one is lighter now there 538 538 and 5.3. Okay, so basically everything is balanced. Now in this case, this one is a little heavy. It's a gram heavier. Now you want to go to about 0.1 of a gram. Uh, so this one, we with the bearings, they are a little bit heavier. So what we're going to do, let's see if I can't mix and match these with another set to get a 5.3.8. Here's a 5.3.8. Sometimes just by... Uh, Rearranging things, you can get the required weight 538. And then it shows 538, then we are fine. 539, that's still there. Okay, so what we're going to do in this case, we're going to go back to our original set bearings. Um, otherwise, we're going to might mess up the weight of that one. So 5, now saying 538. That's why you've got to take three measurements. You've got to be certain of your case because once the material has been removed, you can't put it back. Okay, so I'm going to go with 539 on this one. So what I'm going to do here, you guys will see, I've got these little notches on the side. Now, you never want to remove weight from here, because that's where your strength is. You can see these rods have like almost like a little rib on there. That basically uh, does reinforcing. So we're not touching any of this. We're not touching this end. Um, ideally, you would have a, uh, if you really want to be fancy, this is for a 1.5 master. So we're not going to worry too much about exact precision it's just for my personal knowledge um personal uh, preference because i'm going to be driving this thing so you'd have a, a weight hat holding it here and another one holding it there, and you'd measure the two weights and then remove sort of the sections from it um so should you then remove uh from this end so you you want to do the fancy way you can remove from this rib here although i wouldn't really recommend that because you are this is this is all structure Let's see if i can get some focus there there's all structure on there so basically you're going to make it weaker on this side here the bottom end, this is basically the big one that matters um you'll see i got a little nip run about there and through there and through there so what we're going to do we're going to use our grinder this is very unsafe but uh as i say do as i say not as i do and we're just going to focus on this thing get that spinning up and we're just going to just going to nip that edge there And we're going to do the outside because you want to do uh, all four sides. You don't want to do just one side. And on this side. A little bit on that side. Okay, so we'll take that bit. Make sure the scale is zeroed. I've just wait for this thing to create a vibration. So we're going to get all the erratic readings now. Bearings back on there. Can do this. Five nine. The vibration of the table is going to throw us out. You can see this is rocking there from the vibration. So we just got to slow this guy down a bit. Mm, is there anything I can use for that? Get a little bit more to just pay it up. Don't do this. This is very dangerous. Most of our vibration gone. Right, so now we can get center piece measurements. Five three nine. Five three nine. Five three nine. Okay, so we still got to do some more. So we're just going to remove those bearings. Start her up again. Normally, you use a Dremel for this. Dremels are recommended. But the thing is, you want to make a lot of measurements. And remove very little at a time because once it's too much, it's too much. Then you gotta then you gotta take away of all other rods on this. And I actually want to get to the pistons because I think that's the one that's gonna be the uh, 
with the slider. Okay, let's check that. I'm going to leave it running. I'm going to do the whole stop thing. That's with the bearings. 5 to 9. My workshop is a bit of a mess, it's been a rough week, so just bear with me. Okay, and that's about as much as I'm willing to risk it. Five thirty-eight. Five thirty-eight. Five thirty-eight. See, so notice how little material we actually removed. Uh, I had a bit, a little bit of slip there on the last one. Get a focus on there. You just touch the edge there, touch the edge there, and uh, touch the edge there. Okay, so now we know that our bottom ends are now balanced. Uh, so we can basically put these ones aside. Oh, bad focus there. Sorry. So we're going to put these ones aside, we know we're done with them, um, we know these are fine, so now the only thing is left is the pistons. Now, we know that this one is the uh, 232, and I think this one was a bit heavier, so 234. So we're going to have to remove 2 grams of this one, uh, 2 grams of that one, and 2 grams of that one. This one's zero to the scale again, make sure I've got this measurement right. 32, 233, 32, yeah, different. So I need to remove 2 grams, 2 grams, 2 grams. So what we're going to do is you can, let's see if I can zoom in here a bit, put a light on there so you guys can see better. So you can, uh, see if I got a little, I'll use this test lead. So you can either remove some material there using a Dremel, but this also weakens the surface because you want this to be as thick as you possibly can, so you don't really want to do that. In the factories they normally do that, that's why these little mesh things there, it's how they balance and weigh it and everything. So in this case we're going to be, we're going to be targeting this edge over there. We're going to just on there put a little chamfer on the side there using a Dremel and on this side also be putting a small chamfer onto there on that side. Uh, so I just going to set up, set up the Dremel quickly and I shall uh, be back in a moment. Let's just get that set up. Okay, so I've got my Dremel set up here with a nice uh, tip there to remove the metal. Uh, I do not have the abrasive disc for this video, so I'm just going to demonstrate with this one, but ideally you'd want to use the uh, stone tip um, machine component to basically move this down. So basically you would basically start up the Dremel, speed it a little bit higher, I want that a bit lower. Rather, rather balance for longer and do it properly than do it fast and mess it out. And you can just gonna touch it there. You can have a small little chamfer on there. You can even you can see these uh oh, focus is quite bad. There we go. You can even see these casting marks there. You can even start by just machining off those casting marks there. Gently, gently working it down, taking your time. Now important to thing that I just want to mention here, I just want to put that down, is a uh, zoom out here. Now we are on the scale, so you might be tempted to, uh, to remove weight here and look at the numbers, but don't, because remember, if you remove it up here, the metal still goes somewhere, it still sits on the component, it's still on, on the plate, so you really want to do this off the scale, and then just do confirm measurements, and then take it off there. Uh, so I'm, I am going to balance this one quickly, I can't hold the camera all this, I need to basically hold the piston firmly while operating the Dremel for obvious safety reasons. And I shall do this quickly and uh, update you guys in a few seconds. Okay, so that probably took me about half an hour. Um, so you got this back down to 232. Alright, checking with the other one, the original. 232. Okay, so what we did, what I had to do here is, uh, let me just put them side side so you guys can see the difference and zoom in a bit. Now you'll notice the surface finish is quite significantly different and what I actually did was uh, after the chamfer there was still quite a bit of weight I needed to take off so I actually ended up taking a sanding bit which is uh, not not this one but someone one similar to this a smaller one and I actually ended up uh, machining off with the Dremel all these 
uh, casting marks of the piston. Get this light on here. The light is on. So all these casting marks here on the edges are basically just uh, polished off with the with the sanding disc uh, to get the desired surface. So notice I didn't touch the outside in any way. Uh, all the castings are still there. Because what, what we don't want to do is basically move the piston. And notice how little the shape has changed from this one to the other one. Because you don't really want to change the shape. You just want to remove... I can probably do this a little bit better. Get a uh, finer grit sandpaper just to make it look a bit more uh, appealing. But uh, that really won't make a difference. And I've got my desired weight, so I'm good. Um, yeah, so one thing I wanted to point out as well. These points here are for oil supply. See if I can zoom in a bit more. Yeah, so those are for oil supply. And I didn't go anywhere near there and on the edges here as well uh, which is important when you're taking in the chamfer I think you'll probably see on the, the casting ones you'll see sorry for the bad camera quality there's a little lip right about there now that's not a uh, casting mark that is like a um, it's very the camera doesn't show it but but it's it's there maybe on the the cast one you'll be able to see there's a little point sticking out there that little point there that is basically just like a uh, wear section so much a bit of a wear section so you guys can so as this moves around against the gudging pin it can basically take up the frictional vibration of there without actually wearing out the actual piston itself on the inside okay guys so that's basically the long and the short of it um, Obviously now we're going to balance these other ones out, and they're still at 200 and 234, so there's still quite a bit to go. Uh, this one's sitting at 235, so quite a lot to take down there, so I'm going to end the video here. It's getting it long, about 17 minutes or long. And uh, yeah, and when you guys weigh this again, do take a cloth and wipe down all your uh, dust, if you can call it that, that was removed from the from the components because uh, you do get quite a bit of dust and that does affect the readings because all the material that you are especially removing goes somewhere, it doesn't disappear, it sits on here, it sits on the scale it goes in between the, the, the pins there, it goes in between the rings so you really gotta sand this properly and then clean it properly before weighing because it does affect your, your readings, even by the placement on the scale uh, affects your readings as well. So do keep that in mind So I'm gonna call it there for this video uh, Leave it there and I'm gonna finish up the other uh, two pistons and uh, Then start reassembling so I hope this helps so if in case anyone ever needs to do any um, piston oh, Assembly and one more thing I wanted to uh, touch on is uh, the reason why we weighed these individually is that let's say this one was heavier we would basically the Focus is so off. We would basically uh, pair the the heaviest pin with the lightest piston to try and counteract that weight difference so let's say i had one here that was uh 79 grams i would actually place this with the original piston bringing this up to uh 232 and therefore i only had to remove one gram uh, of this instead of two but unfortunately that's not the case these ones are probably banned so we are going to be in uh, balancing all of these and uh, yeah I shall end the video there good luck guys hope you have a good day